The best thing you could do is find me guilty. The best thing you can do is slam me with a prison sentence. The last thing I'm going to do is beg you and ask you not to. I'm never going to apologise because I've done nothing wrong. And people are watching, and they think by deplatforming us and removing us from social media, people are not going to see this. People are seeing it. People are pissed off. People are angry. They're getting angrier and angrier and angrier with what they're seeing. They're watching as their freedoms are taken away, and they're sending a message to the rest of the public by what they're doing to me. So if I take myself out of the equation, my wife, my kids out of the equation, do, you, do your best. Because when you do your best, you have no idea what you're going to bang. You nearly banged it when you put me in prison last time and 30,000 people climbed over the gates of Downing Street. Watch what happens when you do it this time. So essentially, if I take myself out of the equation and I sit there and think, what's best for the cause? Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Well, well 100%, they're going to send me a jail because they've ruled against the law. They've not followed the law. The, they've gone completely against the law. I haven't broke the law. It's, it's shown me that they don't care. They don't care that the world's watching. They don't care that they haven't followed their own laws. They do not care. Facebook and Instagram banned conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. I am now completely banned. Now, InfoWars, of course, is that web show and website led by rageaholic Alex Jones. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. I think they are horrible for our society. These people aren't terrifying or anything. But there's also guys on CNN that spend their whole day calling Facebook and saying, can you ban this person? These are very extreme individuals. And no matter what anyone tells you, they are extremists. And that's why Facebook uh, decided uh, to get rid of them. Basically, they've deem these individuals to be dangerous is what Facebook is saying. Those individuals include people like right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Organizations like Media Matters have pointed out consistently how Alex Jones and other uh, InfoWars pages had just simply circumvented any ban by starting a different account or going on Instagram. If you don't like someone on Facebook, don't follow them. It's not that hard to figure out. Facebook, are you going to do something about the liberals who call me the N-word? No. Because big tech is only interested in going after conservatives. You know, the really dangerous ones. Dangerous as in saying things that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like. President Trump retweeted Paul Joseph Watson twice and a brief video by InfoWars Millie Weaver. Social media's hall monitor, Brad Stelter, was not very happy about it. He is promoting the same alternative universe as InfoWars. Back to your point, though, about the InfoWars presidency. I want to know, and I, I tweeted this the other day, what is the difference right at this point between Trump's Twitter feed and InfoWars.com. InfoWars content is useful to him. InfoWars personalities align with him. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. I think they are horrible for our society. I want them shut down. I want them silenced. I want them muted. Don't worry. These people aren't terrifying or anything. InfoWars, the most banned network in the world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come to you with dire news for free speech. You've seen all the calls to have me arrested, calls for us to be taken off the air, calls for Trump to be impeached and arrested. You've seen members of Congress the last week say if, they, if we criticize them, we should be arrested right here in the United States. Well, in Europe, it happens. If you criticize Islamic terror, you get arrested. If you make a post saying you don't like the EU, you get arrested. And now in the UK... They make thousands and thousands and thousands of arrests every single year for people that simply criticize the corruption in the government. Well, Tommy Robinson is uh, no stranger to this broadcast. He is a national hero. And, uh, well, there's the uh, headlines. Tommy Robinson guilty over Facebook broadcasts. So the headline on InfoWars uh, right now with this live stream gets it right. UK court finds Tommy Robinson guilty for journalism, guilty for conducting journalism. He'll be sentenced next week. Dark days, my friends, for Tommy Robinson, a true hero. I won't go over his whole background, but first expose the Muslim grooming gangs, the mass rape, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he joins us here in the war room with myself and Owen Schroyer. Tommy, this is uh, tough. I know you, you lost something like 35, 40 pounds last time you were in prison. You were put in prison before that for a year and almost killed by the Islamics. Uh, we're all rooting for you, my friend. It's, it felt like a punch in the gut earlier when I learned that you had been found guilty of conducting journalism. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, 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 honestly, Alex, I, I knew they were going to find me guilty because uh, I don't have a jury. 
So I'm before, before a judge, the Old Bailey. Just so people understand, today, the Old Bailey, that is the highest court of our land that only has serious cases. There were 13 murder trials, and then Tommy Robinson was on trial for causing some anxiety to Muslim paedophiles. That's what was happening today. And I was convicted on three counts. I had three different charges. So, so people understand, 14 months ago, roughly 14 months ago, I stood outside of Leeds Crown Court. I went into the court in the morning. This is all backed up by witnesses that they, that they had come to court. I went in and said, can I have the information about the reporting restrictions on this case? I was told by the witness who admitted this in court, he didn't know of any reporting restrictions. My colleague went in, looked on the screen, took a picture of the screen, looked on the courtroom door, no mention of reporting restrictions. I went on my phone, I looked online, I looked at the court website, no mention of reporting restrictions. Now, if you Google, which is exactly what I've done, so I've researched all, all these things myself, if you Google reporting restrictions in the criminal court, the top link you'll come to brings up the judicial system's website. Now, on that website, is where it gives instructions for media and citizens to know what they can and can't do regarding reporting restrictions in British courts. There's not one website that lists which courts have them all. In 2014, the British government were advised by the Law Commission so that, so that it's fair, they must get one national website where when they have a reporting restriction on the case, it's on the website, one national website, so journalists and the British public can go and have a look if and that's called a, and that's called for those that don't know, Tommy, a D notice, correct? Yes. Yeah, so that, so then you can, so then, yeah. So then, when, if 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 you're in, Luton, if there's a court case in Luton, and I and I want to look at that court case, I can look on one national website and see the details of what you can and can't say. Now, in 2014, the Law Commission told the British government, "This is what you have to do." They didn't do it. They haven't done it. On their website, if you read it, it specifically says their guidelines are. They have to have it on the courtroom door. They have to have it on the courtroom screen. They have to have it on the website, yeah? The report restrictions. What it turned out, which we had the evidence of in court, when it came to my statement, I said, there was nothing on the screen, there was nothing on the door. I had to give my affidavit four weeks ago, which, gave, which said this. They then went to Leeds Crown Court, and they got the computer system, which then printed off, because they thought they were going to prove me wrong. But what it done was prove me right. At no point. And this come out in court from their witness. At no point were the restrict reporting restrictions uploaded onto the court system. So it was never on the screen, never on the door. No one ever knew. It, the judge gave a report restriction, but it was never uploaded anywhere. This come out in court. It was proven in court that they didn't follow three separate procedures to notify people of the report restriction. Well, Tommy, so that's like saying the speed limit has been uh, lowered, but they don't put a sign up. That's it. And when I went up to I went up to Leeds Crown Court, and I went in and asked. I tried to find out about the report restriction, and because I had been told there was one, what I then did, and this is from their website, what I then did is I aired on the side of caution. So I took it that okay, there's a report restriction. Okay, even though I think it it's not on the site, it's nowhere. I have been told previously there is one. So all of these other rules become irrelevant. This is from their, the judicial's website. Courts, this is at the bottom, courts have no power under Section 4 to prevent publication of material that is already in the public domain. What I did, I stood outside court, and I read from a BBC News website. And I said, this is the list of names of the men that are in court today. And here are their charges. They haven't disputed that everything I said was in the public domain. Now, according to this, which is on their website, still now it's current on their website, do you know what their argument was to this? It's wrong. It's not the law. It's like, it's on your judicial guidelines website, the government's. It's your website. So, so this, is, member, this, is pure, this is pure judicial tyranny, in my view. Tommy, what do you think of this? And the big question when we come back in the next segment, think about it. But what do you think is going to happen at your sentencing next week? You're obviously a political enemy. 
uh, you almost won your run for parliament, e even though they censored you for the uh, EU parliament. Uh, you're a national hero. Your numbers go up and up and up, even in their fake polls. So they want to silence you. We'll think about that and come back from the break and talk about what you face. But tell us the best websites for people to visit. Tell us the best uh, areas for people to stay in touch with you and your family as you stand up and fight for all of us. I've just got tr.news tr is the website. And then now the only social media I have left is, is Telegram. And again, that's Tommy Robinson News. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just, my charge is, my charge is Alex. Charge was that I, I breached the reporting restriction. Second charge was that by asking the Muslim defendant how they feel about their verdict, that I could have caused them anxiety, which would make them feeling uncomfortable on their trial. The trial had finished. Trial was over. I got convicted today and found guilty of contempt for asking a paedophile, convicted paedophile now, how do you feel about your verdict? I showed in court today a BBC news journalist asking me the identical questions outside of the Old Bailey, the court that I was being tried in. I said, actually, so we showed evidence. I said, let's play. She done exactly to me what I did to her. And I'll send you now, Alex, another video. After court, she come up to me, the same journalist, and I said, what's the difference between what I did and what you did? And do you know what they said in court? They said that we must send a message to all these new citizen journalists. Basically, you can't do it. That's basically what this was. That's right. They're telling citizen journalists, shut your mouth or we'll throw you in prison, especially if you're the guy 12 years ago that first be uh, began to expose the kidnapping rings, the grooming, the little girl's dead, cut up and fed into kebab machines. You were the first to talk about how they don't just kill and rape the girls or rape and kill. They cut them up and then sell them to the public as meat kebabs. That was in the news last month, and the man indicted for it uh, doesn't say he's sorry for reportedly cutting her up and feeding her uh, to people as meat kebabs. And so these are the type of people that you had the will to expose. And the truth is they're supplying, reportedly, children to government officials. Let's not just blame the Muslims. There's a big appetite by the British elite and others to diddle kids. Uh, and so they're basically the Renfield supplying the Draculas. Tommy Robinson, a hero to the world of nationalism and patriotism. Here on The War Room, we're going to ask him what he's facing next week, what his lawyers are telling him on the other side. I'm Alex Jones with Newswars.com, Infowars.com. Tomorrow's news today. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a quote that Tommy said after he was tortured in jail and starved to death, very close to it. He said, I'm not a victim, I'm a target. Well, they're trying to put me in prison right now. You know all about it, it's all over the news with the worst stuff you can do. Leo Zagami is a great patriot. He's had to leave Italy where his family's aristocratic, successful. Uh, he's a best-selling author. He's had to leave her. They're trying to put him in prison there. They've arrested him a bunch, sued him dozens of times. Same thing's happening to me. They've sued Trump over a thousand times. They're trying to put him in prison. This is a real civil war we're in against multinational corporations, against nation states. And Tommy Robinson has been at the heart of that resistance. And look at these headlines from the BBC. Tommy Robinson guilty over Facebook broadcast. Imagine if 30 years ago you read, or 20 years ago, or 10 years ago, someone guilty over broadcasting, politely reading a BBC article of how they'd been found guilty. And all the rest of the media could be there but Tommy Robinson couldn't. We have the footage of the judge at the window laughing at him and pointing at him as he got arrested. Well, he appealed it. He got out of prison. And now they plan to put him back in, it looks like, next week. This is so incredible that we've reached this point. But when, when freedom fails, the best men rot in filthy jails. And those that cry to peas of peas are hung by those they tried to please. Tommy Robinson, we didn't talk much before he went live on air. I don't know the answer to this. You usually know the answer. What What's the best bet on what's going to happen to you, my friend, next week? Tell us what the sentencing is and tell us what you think you're facing. So it can carry a two-year sentence. I think I'm well, 100% they're going to send me to jail because they've ruled against the law. They've not followed the law. The, they've gone completely against the law. Haven't broke the law. They, and, and anyone who's watched the video, if you watch the video, I'm polite, I'm calm. 
when I, when I ask some questions. Tommy, you I'm going to interrupt you. Even if you broke the law, the law's wrong. People, I used to watch UK News 20 years ago, 10 years ago, there'd be gaggles of reporters outside of court asking lawyers and convicted or not convicted people. It's normal. You weren't in the court. You weren't meddling. D notices used to be on spy stuff and top secret things. It wasn't, I mean, uh, you've explained that. You did nothing wrong. They did this wrong. So why would they do this? And what do you think you're facing? Um, um, I think I'm going, to, I'm going to jail. The best bet I've got now is to launch another appeal. Again, again, Alex, £115,000 we've spent fighting this case. This is what a lot of it comes to. So now if I put, if I lodge an appeal, it's another £30,000 minimum. Yeah? So that if not, they're eating you up. So if I lodge an appeal, if I get sent to jail next Thursday, then I can apply for bail to get out of jail whilst I await my appeal. But the, what it's shown me... No, they eat you up like cancer. Same thing's happening to us. They're suing Owen as well. Keep, keep going. It's, it's shown me that they don't care. They don't care that the world's watching. They don't care that they haven't followed their own laws. They do not care. They are changing a new... Do you know what, Alex? I was charged... Originally, they told the whole world that I prejudiced the trial and I risked collapsing. Yeah? When two separate judges it went for said, actually, no, he didn't. There's nothing he says that does that. That case then gets dropped, yeah? I then get out, I'm, I'm out, I'm released from prison for what they call an unlawful and a flawed process within the courts. Then, for five months, the Attorney General sits on this. I produce a documentary, Panadrama. Panadrama completely exposes the corruption with the BBC working alongside far-left George Soros organized organizations to frame me for sexual allegations. We have undercover footage of it. The biggest expose on the BBC. Oh, 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 let's explain. You got millions of views in one day. YouTube banned it. We aired it. Tell folks the name of it. It's on your site so, so people can find it. Where their undercover video admitting, just set him up. Say he raped you. Say he assaulted you. And they go, well, but that's not true. This is what they do. Pa pa this is, uh, and it's called Panadrama. So Panorama is the BBC's flagship show. We called ours Panadrama. We had their lead investigator, their face of Panorama, on camera, setting me up, blatantly setting me up. The biggest expose that the BBC in this country has ever seen, and not one single British journalist talked about it. I was removed from Facebook, removed from YouTube, all, all within 24 hours. I was completely deplatformed from everywhere within 24 hours. And five days later, the Attorney General ordered me to be prosecuted on these charges. These charges, which they've created because they're completely separate charges to the charges I was originally put in jail for when they first put me in jail, they added two new charges of causing anxiety to the Muslim pedophiles. So this is the whole leftist system of you hurt my feelings, therefore the Magna Carta 1215 means nothing. So, so pulling back big picture, you've had tens of thousands in the streets for you. Um, you, you you've basically relaunched a whole new yellow vest movement in the UK. What is the, and you're not threatening anything, but what is your concern of if you do go to prison or they uh, do hurt you again or they do throw acid in your face again or they do try to stab you again or, God forbid, they do kill you? What could this set off for these arrogant tyrants? Alex, this is the thing. Like, I'm feeling sorry for myself, you know, which I need to slap out of and snap out of. But at the same time, in fa as far as my cause go causes, as far as our cause, yeah, and I've, everything's for, the, for our cause, Send me a jail and kill me in prison and watch the country go. So essentially, I know that's a stupid thing to say, but essentially, I've always said it, this country needs a revolution. Yeah, Put me in jail, have me killed if you stupid morons think that's going to not do it, and I, want to, and I only wish that I'd be here to watch the country rise because it's going to take a moment. It's going to, I've always said it's going to take something. They have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. So essentially, for the cause, please, the best thing you could have done is find me guilty on all three charges. The best thing you can do for my cause and our country's cause and our people's cause and the uprising of people against your totalitarianism, the best thing you could do is find me guilty. The best thing you can do is slam me with a prison sentence. The last thing I'm going to do is beg you and ask you not to. I'm never going to apologise because I've done nothing wrong. And people are watching, and they think by deplatforming us and removing us from social media, people are not going to see this. People are seeing it. People are pissed off. People are angry. They're getting angrier and angrier and angrier with what they're seeing. They're watching as their freedoms are taken away, and they're sending a message to the rest of the public by what they're doing to me. So if I take myself out of the equation, my wife, my kids out of the equation, do, you, do your best. Because when you do your best, you have no idea what you're going to bang.
You nearly banged it when you put me in prison last time and 30,000 people climbed over the gates of Downing Street. Watch what happens when you do it this time. So essentially, in my own, if I, in my own, if I, take, myself, if I, if I take myself out of the equation and I sit there and think, what's best for the cause? Do it. Do it, do it, do it. Send me to the most populated Muslim shithole in there and watch what happens out here. So essentially, as far as my cause goes, please do it. I don't want to go to jail. I've got, I want to see my kids if I'm thinking of myself. If I'm thinking of myself, if I take myself out of myself and think of the cause, think of our country, you know what? The British public need to witness real wrongdoings. They've witnessed and, and, one... And, and, exactly, and Tommy, with the ignoring of the Brexit and all the tyranny yeah. people are seeing the, and, and the stabbings, uh, my, my son has a, a friend in Spain who came three years ago and was a exchange student. He's fighting for his life in Madrid right now, stabbed by a North African Muslim and him, a couple of his friends for no reason at a bus stop. Do one more segment. I know it's late over there. I want you to flesh out more of what you're facing, what's coming up, the climate over there. Tommy Robinson, this isn't Netflix. It's not a drama. This is a real world, a real guy that was sent to prison for a year for exposing child kidnapping murder gangs, a hero facing prison again for being a reporter convicted of journalism. Well, my friends, Alex Jones here with Owen Schroyer on this Friday edition of The War Room every weekday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I, I've come in with Owen because I, I was intending to call Tommy. I just learned that he was facing jail time for journalism. They even say that in the BBC. Tommy Robinson guilty over Facebook broadcast after pedophiles he first exposed were convicted of grooming, kidnapping, and sex slaving children. And so the pedophiles that run the UK, and that's, that's even mainstream news, that's basically who runs the government, uh, are very, very upset. Look at the Catholic churches run by it. Uh, mainline institutions are run by it. Uh, we have videos we won't even show on air of children now humping and, and, and riding drag queens in public. People would now bring their children to them. People used to bring their kids to bail and throw them into fire pits. Now they bring them to them to, to, to ride horsey. Uh, Tommy Robinson guilty over Facebook broadcast. It's what you hear about, journalists being arrested, journalists disappearing. He's already spent a year in jail, then three months in jail, uh, been, 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 been tortured, been targeted because the UK government are globalists. They're not traitors. They're not even Brits. They're globalists enslaving the people. But now he's a folk hero. Owen Schroyer, jump in any time here. But, but you know, Tommy, uh, you're there next Thursday. You're, you're going to be there uh, at this court there in London uh, where I guess uh, they're going to supposedly sentence you uh, for your great thought crime of exposing pedophilia. Alex, I've already done... Contempt of court laws, you know, I've read through comparable cases. I've already done nearly three months of solitary confinement for a civil crime where I was held. I didn't see anyone. You're not allowed to do that in the UK prison system. They did it. Um, for example, Rod Liddell was a journalist for the Times newspaper when he prejudiced, he, he reported prejudicial information which collapsed a murder trial. He received a three and a half thousand pound fine. The Daily Mirror newspaper published information which collapsed another murder trial. It actually prevented justice for one of the victims with the Levi Bellingfield murder trial, three and a half thousand pound fine. I found one woman who breached 26 court orders before she was sent to prison. She got 12 weeks in prison. For my, I was the first journalist in 60 years since contempt of court order to be put in prison. I have seen Tommy, we know you're being persecuted, but... What politically comes out of this? What can we do to try to stop this? How long do you think they're going to try to throw you in prison? What are your lawyers telling you? How, how much time are you facing? Because they, people don't understand. You're put in solitary confinement, and then the Muslims use your food delivery opening as a toilet as part of how they torture you. Well, they use... So I was fine in the first prison I went to, and then they moved me to the prison with the biggest Muslim population. So then they could use the fact of my safety, so then they forced me, because I don't want to be put, then they forced me, oh, you, we have to isolate you on your own because you'll get killed in here. So then that, and I got out on an appeal after three months. I would have ended up spending nine months, or eight months in solitary confinement. They know what someone spending eight months in solitary confinement can do. They are fully aware of that. That's why they've done it. They've done it, trying to order to And if people that don't know, I'm not joking, the Muslims come, the guards let them and use your the, the, the food opening as a toilet to urinate and defecate in. They put an excrement, yeah, they, they, they're putting a, their shite through my window. Um, constant just, and you know what? They mess with everything they can mess with. So, and I got out, you see the state of me, look, you can see me there, I look like a crackhead. 
That was me after three months, less than three months. Imagine after nearly eight months. So, which is what, which is what, how it would have been if I hadn't got out on that appeal. If the if the public in Britain and America and everyone that supported me, if I know that you 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 flew the flag for me, Alex. I know that Brownback, Ambassador Brownback. I know that Congressman um, m made vocal noise about my situation, and all of these things played a part. There was a free Tommy worldwide movement that got me released. I don't think I'd have got out of there. So, and I think now, and I generally, like, I always think, nah, they know the whole world's watching. They can't do that. By today's verdict, the fact they went against the law, they, they've just disregarded the law. The top judges, the people who, the only people who should be principled in the law, they should not be able to be pressured politically, have ignored the law, changed the law, said that nothing matters, and found me guilty of, and anyone who's watched the video, found me guilty of aggressively asking questions of Muslim, convicted Muslim people. I, I, for me, I, I knew they were going to find me guilty because if they didn't find me guilty, then I could have sued the hell out of them for basically kidnapping me off the street and putting me on solitary confinement as a journalist. We hear our government talk all the time about Russia, moan about Russia, <clears throat> moan about China, moan about people's freedoms. You've took our freedoms. You've took our free speech. We live in a post-free speech era. Now you're taking our ability. You've, you've, put, you've pressured social media. You've pressured to completely isolate and get rid of any dissident voices. Then you're not happy with that. Now you've took away our rights and freedoms to even be journalists near courtrooms to talk or even have conversations about these gangs who are raping our children from one end of our country to another. You, and America, I keep saying it. All And you know what? The sickest thing of all of this for me is that our media are celebrating. They have no idea that what they're doing to me, if any of our media went against the status quo, they can do exactly the same to them. They've, this has been now set a precedent as a trial. You can't ask someone a question going into court. Or they, they actually use the thing that sometimes, although it will amount to contempt, other things, it's not in the public interest to prosecute. But it is with Tommy Robinson. You're absolutely right. And how many of the police and these people are, are have been, I mean, they're just so anti-Western, so traitorous. They, they just love it. And the courts love it. But the people hate their guts now. I, I'm told by folks I know that live in the U.S. and the U.K., uh, who were from Ireland, Scotland, and England that I'm friends with. Some of them are successful you know, business owners and folks that I know. They tell me, Tommy, that when they go back, the UK is more pissed than ever, totally on edge. They talk about Brexit. They talk about Tommy Robinson. And quite frankly, they talk about how when it all kicks off, they're not going to go fight the Muslims. They're going to go target the politicians. Well, Alex, that's, that, that's why I'm saying, like, as far as the cause goes, like, they couldn't do a better thing for, for the cause. Because all the people can see the ro how wrong this is. They've seen Brexit. They're realizing, hold on, we're actually living in a democracy. They're realizing, hold on, we haven't got free speech. Hold on, you're lying about that. Hold on, we what about the lion, the lion of London Bridge stabbed all those times, protected all those people after the Muslims killed eight plus people. They sent him to a re-education camp in case he didn't like Muslims. Well, Tommy, I know that you're just responding to all this right now, but I'm curious. I'm sure you've done the measurements in your head. I mean, you're looking at a situation, you broke it down earlier. Do you think, and perhaps you're still measuring this, do you think it's better for the cause to have them send you to jail or kill you? Or are you looking at this moment in time and saying, maybe it's better for me to throw my hands in the air and say, you know what? Britain is dead. Your country's dead. It's gone. Respond how you want. Have you done that full measurement yet? I've had, you know, I've been doing a measurement for a while in the sense of, uh, I was looking in the measurement in the sense of, for my family. Because when I was last in prison, when I was in prison on solitary confinement, the police went to my mother's house, went to my wife's house and said, we have intelligence, we have sufficient intelligence that you are going to come under attack with acid. Yeah? So in my head, I, for a long time now, I've been wanting, I want my wife and children to be safe. And they're not going to be in this country as the years go on. I'm not safe. I'd be, I said when I come out of court, Donald Trump, please help us. I'm going to end up being killed. I am. I do need political asylum. But at the same time, when if I'm weighing up on the cause, the best thing that could possibly happen to awaken the people of this country, because I'll give it in my final speech. Well, well Tommy, stay right there. We'll do one more segment with you, and I know you got to get back to your family, but I know what it's like to have your wife concerned. I know what it's like to have your kids concerned. And I don't know if people understand, this isn't Netflix. This is entertainment. This is some movie where they're coming after you. 
This is them coming and uh, police that work for the Islamists, work for the globalists, going, your wife's going to get acided. And they've come to his house with thugs trying to get him to... He hasn't even gotten into all this. This guy's been through so much epic stuff that you think, oh, Alex Jones has been through some stuff. Okay, I've been on air 25 years. I've been through half of what he's been through, okay? They are so pissed and angry at this guy, Tommy Robinson, that they send thugs to his house, 20, 30 of them, threatening to kill his family when he's there and when he's not there. They come in jail and tell him, we're going to let you finally talk to your wife after a month. And she goes, baby, they're coming to kill me. Th this is what they do. And then he still can't give up because there's something in him. It's called being a man. But I want to hear about this wife. I know you want to talk about her, but your kids. Because I know they've told you, keep doing it. And that's the real strength. That's a real woman right there. She's told Tommy, keep it up. I know that because Tommy told me that privately. I want to talk about this amazing woman who we never see in these great kids we've seen in videos. The Muslims trying to attack, but you didn't put out there. But Tommy Robinson, final segment. This is the fight for humanity. You want people to stand up? You're getting it right now. We're committed. And believe me, the first they came for Tommy Robinson. Alex Jones here back live with Owen Schroyer. It's the war room. I want to encourage Tommy Robinson, who just got this news a few hours ago, to do as much media as he can, he obviously knows that, to come back on my Sunday show, to come back on the big Monday show. This one's huge, but we need the full audience. We need Matt Drudge. We need everybody to be able to hear this. The president, the White House listens to that weekday show. They watch everything we do at Infowars.com. But you're calling for Trump for help. I think if you come on right at the start of the show, Tommy, in fact, I think if you can do it Monday, I think it's probably best if you just host the first hour of Monday. If you can do it 11 a.m. Central, I guess it's about 6 o'clock over there. Um, I won't even be there. I think just to, for the full, full value of, of, of you there, he's saying, here's Tommy Robinson, he's hosting, and you just take over so you can really speak directly to the American people because... It took us thousands of years to get the basic freedom we have, and it's being totally erased right now, and you've done absolutely nothing. I mean, I've got the headlines right here where it's BBC, it's it's Sky News, it's everything. Tommy Robinson found in contempt of court for aggressively confronting defendants. This is for reading a BBC article outside of the court. And he's been found guilty of journalism. I mean, this is, like you said, we heard about this in the Soviet Union. This is happening so, so you've manned up. You've manned up, and, and, and so you're saying you're not backing down. Because don't forget, m six months ago, whatever it was, they wanted you to apologize and say you were guilty, and they wouldn't put you back in jail. But you did nothing. Alex, you know, when, when I was outside the courtroom, there were 30, 29 perpetrators. They were all on bail for two years. 16 victims. 16 people have given statements identifying them, giving detailed stories and evidence against these men. The judge let all the men go home on bail. The judge took me off the street and put me straight automatically, sentence, court, five hours, prison. Yeah? He let the paedophiles go home. One of those paedophiles has gone off, never come back to court. Okay, He's suspected to be in Pakistan. Now, I'm going to end up going to prison twice for talking about these paedophiles, when that man still has never even gone, gone to prison. I have spent £115,000 fighting this case. The Rochdale groomers, the Pakistani grooming gang from Rochdale, who caused terror across Rochdale by raping a generation of children in that city, when they were convicted, they had a million pounds. When they were convicted, the judge said they must be deported. So far, They've all out of jail. Guess what? None of them have been deported. They're all still walking around the streets of our country after a, after a notice says they have to be deported. They've spent a million pounds of our taxpayer money to go against that notice that says they have to be deported. I, the injustice, I, I, the only satisfaction I get, whilst I don't like it, the only satisfaction I get is I'm fully aware that the public have to see so many wrongs and injustices that make them think, that make them wake up. It might be... Tommy, despite... that's my next point. They have banned you off the internet. They have banned me off the internet. Uh, everyone has to get this feed on our own post at Infowars.com and Newswars.com. We're live right now on radio and TV, big audience. Everyone, when this is posted tonight, must get it on your text message, your email, your Facebook, your Twitter, and say, UK journalists facing prison time for exposing pedophiles who were convicted. We must... Get this out. Yeah, click it right there. It's on newswars.com. Tommy Robinson, 
found guilty of committing journalism, committing, we should add committing crime of journalism by UK court. We must get this live feed out, but also, but, but, but Tommy continue, can you join me Sunday or Monday? Because, I, because this, this is a whole other show, it's a big show, but I want my full audience uh, tuning in to hear this. Uh, Monday's good, bro, Monday's good. Monday's good, but and what I'll do is I'll get all the details out of what was said and the quotes what was said. Do you know what they, they accepted? They accepted that, yeah, the guidelines were not followed. The reporting restriction notices were put nowhere. There were so so what I keep saying is, as a member of the British public, if I if I wanted to report on, on, on crimes, how am I supposed to know about a reporting restriction? There's no website. So you go to court, you ask someone, no, we don't know. It's supposed, you look at the judiciary's website, what their guidelines are. Well, it has to be put on the courtroom door. So you look at the courtroom door, it's not on there. Okay, so it's impossible. And then they're penalising me for that. And they're not even penalising me for that because it's irrelevant of whether there was a reporting restriction or not. Because according to their own law, the judge doesn't have the power to put any restriction on any information that's already in the public domain. No, you domain. said that. It's a total judicial power grab. And as you said, hundreds, thousands more, if you even appeal this... Tell us about that appeals process, because I, I hopefully you, you'll take the appeal and get out after a week. Hopefully they don't kill you like the three months of the year in jail. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you are definitely, if anybody should ever get uh, political asylum to the U.S., it should be you. Hopefully President Trump would give you asylum. I know it's hard for you to even get on an airplane to get over here. Perhaps Trump should send uh, Air Force One to pick you up. I'm serious. No, mate, I'm, I'm serious. I, it's, it's inevitable. I'm going to end up dead. That's been inevitable for a long time coming. I just well, Tommy, that. that's what I want to say. I mean, have you committed now your life to this? I mean, beyond the clown world stuff, I mean, I, I feel like every every person that has your back needs to go out in front of a courtroom and read the story on their live stream, say, oh, here's the BBC story that Tommy Ro uh, Robinson got arrested for reading. Go right to the court case. Thousands of people should be doing it's that. Spartacus, they gonna arrest we're all everyone? Tommy Robinson now. So, Tommy, I mean, point blank, have you decided yet your life is in this, or are you are you maybe thinking I need to get out of here for my family's sake? Now my life's in it. I just need my family to get out of it. For that, so that well, that was my, my next sake. question, and I asked that twice, and we went to break. Tommy, I know you don't want to make them a target; they're already a target. Talk about this wonderful life. Talk about your great children, because I know I, I've seen private photos and videos and talked to them some. Talk about this beautiful, amazing family and this champion wife you've got that is standing oh. with you. What? Because most most people, men and women, roll over to tyranny. Why why is your wife supporting you? I mean, it's beautiful. Tell us why. I don't know why. She's because I'm an art. <laughs> I don't know. You're probably going to get me emotional, upset, even thinking about. It. Hey, you know Tommy, what? you could be in jail, and you know, you know what? Next week, go ahead and be emotional. Tell us about this family. I you know why. I I know what I know. It's gonna, this is going to destroy my son. I know it is, especially in the sense that. Um, it was the last, so school holidays are next week. Bro. So my kids break up for six weeks next week. And uh, and that's what I was thinking, the timing of it. I, it was last summer holidays when I was, when this happened last time, when I was taken, it was the last school summer holidays. So it's the same again. So, and I saw the effect. So my son cried every single night, man. And it really had a lasting effect on him. And then, so this is, that's what hurts me because it's not just, it's not just me. You know I mean, I can see. The only thing that really, the only thing which was a, 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 an amazing moment for me was for years in this cause, in the first two years of my activism, um, there were there were Muslims, a few years in, six Muslims got caught with guns, bombs, IEDs, they were on their way to kill me, they got 30 years in jail, okay? I then knew, I'm not stupid, I sit and think deeply about all these things, I'm fully aware then, continuing on this path, someone's going to get me, and it's 100%. And in those first early years of activism, it was difficult to deal with that. It was difficult. It was. I felt like I'm walking along. With, I'm walking around with a terminal cancer, and then and then. But once I accepted it, which I've completely accepted that, now, it's also an empowering thing because it makes you just. I don't really because I've accepted that reality. No, you're right. It's like V for Vendetta when they simulate that the, the, she's killed when she's finally ready to die. He goes, "You're free now," and and that's so. So you became totally free when you committed. So I, I live my life that so, so, so that's how, and, and I'm fully aware of that. And I think that the only thing, it's just, it's just, oh man, it's, 
just a, it's just a difficult thing. It's, it's, it's the family. And it's not the family. It's in the sense of, I always thought our jihadi would kill me. You know what I mean? Now, but I never pictured the, the state, the levels they're going to, and the fact they don't care that everyone's watching this. And they don't care that they're going against, and it's so blatant to anyone seeing it. And then the media play their part of propaganda. Then they just flood the place with all their lies and their, their narrative on the agenda, which is no... The, none of the media reported that admitted in court by the lead person in court. And was then your the, own British citizens dress up as Antifa and 10 to 1 try to kill you, but you fight them off. My friend, Monday, first hour, whatever hour you want, I want to just... You know, plus, get you an external mic because you sound great. But I want you to host the show. I want you to really run the info war for an hour. And uh, literally, I'm just going to be there to traffic cop it. I want you to have the floor because you're a hero and you're in the standard of a real man and, and a stand up guy. And somebody stepping up to the plate, you know, bellying up at the bar, manning up is what it's called. And uh, we all know we're going here too in this fight. But we're going to win in the end, Tommy. We're going to win in the end. Uh, we're out of time. Thank you so much and God bless you, my friend. Uh, give people the website again, the best place to donate and support what you're doing. TR.news. We've got, our, yeah, we're, 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 all I say is we keep fighting. So whether I, we're going to fight this legally again, if I end up in jail, I'll be fighting every day. So I'll get out. So that's right. We're never going to stop fighting either. Infowarsstore.com, folks, please support us. We won't back down either. And you won't either. We're committed to each other. We're going to win. God bless you, Tommy. Folks, we are launching.